everybody and welcome to my channel. You are watching XO Alicia Marie. So by today's title, I think it's the obvious. I'm going to tell you about uh, me getting laid off for the third time since the pandemic. It has been about uh, three weeks now since I was laid off with about 17% of my company. I work full time as a mortgage professional. I've also been in real estate. Uh, property management and now mortgage for a total of a, like 17 years. Um, so it's been my career, you know, for most of my adult life. I want to tell you about the moment I got laid off and why this video is also subtitled on why you should be starting a side hustle. I'm not the first YouTuber that I have heard put out a video about starting a side hustle but for me, it was really just a, it was, it was the aha moment. It was the light bulb. So let me backtrack. In 2020, I got laid off with like half of America <laughs> after the pandemic. And that was so scary. My brain was not thinking about starting a business. I was not thinking about hopping on my YouTube channel. I was thinking about survival. I'm a single mom. At the time, my son was three. He's now five and a half. I just wasn't in, I wasn't in the mind space to, to do, you know, anything extra. I had a child full time. I have no family here. His dad lives in San Antonio. So I had no where to really take him to drop him off because everything was closed and it was really difficult to even record a YouTube video uh, with him making noise in the background. So I ended up getting another job in 2020 August. After about the first month, I remember the manager, the lady that was also training me said, it's getting really busy. I can't train you anymore. So what they did is they put me pretty much in a role, like they created the role to where I would do all the order outs for the mortgage process. So it's like order title, order appraisal, order builder docs for anyone that was having a new house being built. I needed those contracts. So I did that for about another month before they ended up letting me go. So again, a layoff, so to speak, I was let go, but they also didn't give me a reason. And there was no previous, there was no disciplinary action for me to like be fired really. So it was, it was kind of weird. It was like, I was fired. I was let go, laid off. Cause I got unemployment. But of course, two weeks after I got my old job back with my mortgage company. So I just kind of looked at it as, you know, this was a universe, you know, letting me out of this one job so I can go back to the one that I started with. So Ming, long story short, when I lost my job for a second time in 2020, even though it was two weeks of being unemployed before I was told I'll be rehired at my old company, I was thoroughly convinced I needed a side hustle that I could grow into a real business. And, you know, doing Lyft and Uber uh, was good extra spare money for me and in, in my seven seater SUV. It's only two of us, but I drive a seven seater SUV, but that's still trading time for money. So, and people still weren't really hopping into Lyfts and Ubers, even in late 2020, there was still a lot of people just not utilizing those services. So I wasn't trying to go out and work a side hustle where I was still trading time for money. I knew I needed to build something else. So of course, the first thing I did was I just started posting again on my YouTube channel, which by the way, some of those videos are still getting me traction till this day because I still see people leaving comments. But I wanted something else that wasn't just YouTube. I kind of felt like I needed to build something that was going to be a little bit more of a product based business instead of a strictly digital business. At the time, my, my brain was logically thinking, just start doing printables because there's really no cost in doing online printables. There's, you know, people selling lots of printables on Etsy. But of course, the first thing my brain was thinking is I got discouraged because there's just so much competition. There's people that are out there designing 
really awesome planner inserts. And I really at the time didn't even know like what I was even gonna, I guess you could say focus on. So here's how my side hustles happened. The, the two that I'm gonna talk about that I actively have been working on since before I got let go this, this year, <laughs> I accidentally created those and I'll explain. So Bad Girl Balm is the tattoo balm that I created and that ended up happening because I was starting to finally look into the whole self-care stuff around the pandemic. And I started to hear about like tattoo balm and tattoo butter. And I know it existed already, but I just didn't really look into it. So I was re-looking into it. And of course I couldn't find anything that was I guess you could say marketed towards women. It seemed like everything out there on Amazon or Etsy was very manly. Like the name of the tattoo product, aftercare product was manly. The uh, the logo was manly. The branding was very manly. And the first thing I thought was like, why is there no feminine, like female focused tattoo aftercare brands that are straight up female focused? So I created it. <laughs> <laughs> the other side hustle that I started, Planner Therapy, I actually created that because I was creating my own half letter planner system and I was so intrigued by the half letter size, trying to get out of the Happy Planner Classic size and I really just wanted to get go to something that was a little bit more mature because I'm 44 and I... Believe me, I love looking at all the colorful Happy Planner stuff, but I was kind of like, you know what? I also love minimalist stuff. I love a lot of black. I went ahead and created my own half letter planner inserts and the actual planner. I was obsessed with the clear planners so that you could essentially like take images or patterns and put it behind your front cover and change them out. I really love the disc system because I need to be able to pull that page out and write all the way to the very edge. And the reason why too is I, like I said, I wanted to get out of the Happy Planner Classic size. I wanted something that I could carry in my purse. I also wanted something smaller because I noticed that when I have less room to write, my handwriting is actually a little bit nicer. I was looking out there, uh, East Side Paper Company or East Paper Company, Poi and Hun, and a couple of the other bigger Etsy sellers that do half letter planner stuff. I just thought, man, even the kit, I forgot which brand, but even the kit was really expensive. And I was like, well, what if I buy all this stuff and I just don't, I don't like it and doesn't jive with me. So, I said, let me just create it. So I ended up going on Etsy, finding some tutorials to actually make the clear dividers and the clear cover. And of course went online and found measurements that were pretty common for a half letter planner. And I used my Cricut machine to create the clear divider, the clear cover. And then I bought the printable vellum. Of course I had paper already. I also had cardstock. And I just started using my Canva to find like really cool images. I went on Pinterest to find some images that I just, illustrations that I loved that I wanted to just put in my planner, not so much resell it. And of course I created my own weekly uh, insert, monthly insert, and I have actively been creating other inserts. So of course, this is what I mean by accident. I created this for myself and I said, I'll just put it up on Etsy to see if someone would buy it. And originally I wanted to do half letter uh, specialty stuff, but I didn't want to get into creating the actual planner inserts. I know that sounds stupid. I was just so overwhelmed. I knew that the industry standard was Adobe InDesign. So I've heard, but since I've started looking back into everything, I've realized there's other publishing software that I could use but I'm just so comfortable with Canva. I've been actually just sort of revamping what I've already designed. Anywho, make a long story short, when I started creating a different planner system, I felt uh, like I was falling in love with just 
everything again, the whole process of like looking at your planner, opening up your planner, writing in your planner. And I really started uh, looking for quotes and stuff like that to put in my planner. So it started to become very inspirational. So that's why I wanted to call it Planner Therapy. Of course, I think the website URL Planner Therapy is like $5,000 on Go, or, uh, on GoDaddy. So I just did plannertherapyshop.com. There was somebody else on Etsy that has the Etsy Planner Therapy shop name, but I went to their page and they had no listings up. It's almost like they just stopped selling on Etsy. I don't know if they ever went and created another website and just moved everything out of Etsy, but I was like, ooh, nobody else has the name Planner Therapy on Etsy. So I'm just gonna brand as Planner Therapy. I created both of these side hustles way before I lost my job. So basically when I lost my job and I was on the phone and you know they were giving me the, the, the news, I was actually happy. <laughs> my first thought was, oh my gosh, now I can focus full time on YouTube, which to me is kind of separate. It's recording a video and maybe later actually creating some stuff that I can give to my audience or sell to my audience one day maybe. Now I had Bad Girl Bomb that I started January, 2021. So that was already in the works. But before I lost my job, uh, late 2021, I barely started the process of getting my product into Amazon. So right now my product is on Amazon. I've got three of my tattoo bombs on Amazon, but there was a little bit of a process because Amazon, you know, is trying to make sure that there aren't people going in to make a quick buck and scamming and whatnot. So I had to go through a little bit of a process. And then, you know, sometimes I'd forget to check my account for the next step and make long story short, I finally got my product up on Amazon about three weeks before I lost my job. And then get this, the day after I lost my job, I had my first sale on Amazon. So <laughs> as you can see, even though I lost my job, I was so happy, so gracious and grateful about the universe literally shoving me into independence. What's kind of cool is when I lost my job, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my friends know that I'm trying to do a, a couple side hustles. I remember you know, I wanted to say, Hey, I lost my job. I'm unemployed, but I didn't. I said, guess what? I'm self-employed. <laughs> I just started saying that as a joke, but it just, it was coming out very natural. So, um, yeah, I've just been working on, you know, pushing everything along a lot faster. The one thing I will say is just because you have, or just because I have all this time to work on everything doesn't really mean things are moving faster than they were before when I had a full-time job. I've had to do a lot of research, a lot of digging for a couple of the things, especially, you know, now that I have all this time, I wanna be a little bit more logical about this. And I really wanna do things in a, proper order for business, so to speak. So in order to do that, I'm actually slowing down so that I could basically kind of start over. And mostly this is pertaining to, to marketing my side hustles. Uh, it's, it's really kind of cool. It's like, Hey, I lost my job. Um, and then, you know, now I have time to focus on all of these three things. You know, they're all technically doable. If you're, if, if this is all that you do, you just have to juggle them and organize yourself appropriately. For example, with bad girl bomb, I had to order some supplies. And while I'm waiting for Amazon to bring me my supplies, which, you know, sometimes if you order something on a Friday, you're not going to get it on a Saturday. And then maybe it's just not in your plans to work on it on Saturday or, you know, you order something on Thursday and Amazon says you're not going to get it until Tuesday. So you have 
all this in between time. And that's when I switch to working on something else. I kind of have each side hustle prioritized because one's a product-based business where I've actually got to sell some product. My product is actually on Amazon. I have to push product that I've pre-made or the ingredients that I've ordered to make more products. The other stuff like the digital products, you probably get a listing up like two to three times a week and just be consistent with it. And that one's a little bit easier for me to design stuff because a lot of times before I've posted something on my Etsy shop for planner therapy, I've already printed it for myself like a month ago and then I've used it myself and I've tweaked it. So by the time it's by the time it's on my Etsy shop, it's it's obviously already been ready to go. It's already been tweaked many times over. Other than that, stuff like quotes those are kind of very easy to come by. So those are easy to crank out. And then I did about 10% of my shop is illustrations that I did purchase a commercial license for. So those things are already made. I just have to kind of prep them. And then those are easy to get out on my shop. So I kind of even rotate between some products that I really have to take a lot of creative time to design, some that don't take very much creative time to design and then they're pre-designed already. So all I gotta do is copy, 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 and then change the text and then upload. And then there's some that are flat out already done. And all I have to do is prep them, which means like create a mock-up. So make a long story short. And then there's times when I'm just not in the mood to design or formulate for Bad Girl Bomb. So guess what? I might actually be in the mood to record a YouTube video, especially when I'm really in the mood to record a YouTube video. I have to get on the camera. Like right now I have this energy and I want to share it with you. And you know, at first I was a little hesitant about telling people that I lost my job, but the whole message of this story is I lost my job. And because I was already preparing, I was already working on side hustles. Now I can just shift my focus to working on these side hustles. And then on top of that, it was such a good week that I lost my job. I mean, I got a new tattoo because I already had that booked, which is this one right here. And, but shortly after, during that week, I got a call from a colleague that said, Hey, cause he knew I lost my job said, Hey, I have a, I got a job for you. So there's a broker that I'm now mortgaging files for mortgaging, mortgaging files for that sounds kind of weird. I know slang and loan files for, and now I don't get paid for that until the, until the loan closes, but I'm doing the work now. And just even the opportunity, it's like, here's another, Here's another wonderful opportunity to be a freelancer. So, you know, I've got some, I've got some uh, loans in the pipeline, so to speak. So who knows? I mean, they might take 30 days to close or 60 days and they, you know, getting paid on them might be spread out a little bit. And, you know, that should coordinate pretty well with getting unemployment. I'm waiting for SNAP benefits as well. So, and I do have some other sources of income that, I've always had. So with all of that being said, I don't think I will have to go back and work full time again for someone else. I will have to see. I am literally taking it month by month, but I'm also giving myself the rest of 2022 to really, really push myself and not just with how fast I'm doing things, but excuse me, not just with how fast I'm doing things, but actually focusing, focusing. And that's the one thing I couldn't do with a full-time job. Yes, I had weeks where we didn't have much work when the interest rates were going up, the feds raising the rates and everything is slowing down in real estate. But any moment my phone would ring or an email notification. It was just a constant distraction. So now it just feels so different. I don't have the distraction. I don't have that feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm tied to my computer. Even though I was working on other things, 
there were certain things I just couldn't get into because I really needed the creative space to just not be interrupted, not, you know, like, and as you, as you all have probably heard by now, especially if you're watching this and you're in your forties, the more you get distracted, it takes like two or three times as long to get back on track to concentrate on that. So anyways, it's been a blessing. I am so glad though, that even though I've only sold one product on Amazon, it's the opportunity. You know, that one product sold, I only had one product up and then I put two more products on there. And then that led me to reinstate my uh, Shopify, my full version of Shopify. So you can actually buy all my products on Shopify now. And then it just pushed me even more. I was like, you know what? I gotta do at least a TikTok a few times a week, probably every day. I've also been increasing my Instagram reels for my YouTube channel. I have my own Instagram account for that, also called XO Alicia Marie. So it's been fun. And uh, what I'm kind of going through now that I'm in my, it's been three weeks, but I think I'm, I'm kind of entering my fourth week of unemployment is I'm now really starting to focus on creating an actual business plan for my YouTube channel so that I can treat YouTube as a business and not just leave it to chance, so to speak. So I'm really working on that right now. That way I want, that way I can put out consistent content for you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely at least gonna be doing once a week because that's kind of the industry standard if you wanna grow on YouTube. But I'm really focusing on two videos per week. And that's because I finally broke down and went on Fiverr and found someone in, on the other side of the world to edit my YouTube videos. I'm basically just trying to do less editing because this is real. This is really me on camera. And if I make a mistake, then so be it. You catch it, right? But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you could like and subscribe to my channel, that would help a girl out. I'm trying to get to monetization. Uh, that way I don't have to depend on a corporate job anymore. And I could just rely on myself because you know, it really is different. It's especially, I felt like I was built for this. I just, I also feel like I've had my struggles like most entrepreneurs do. But anyways, I digress. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.